Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our time together as our Rise Community Church, and we're just so uh, delighted that you are here. Uh, we know it's a, it's a busy season, the uh, Thanksgiving season, people travel, uh, family and friends, and so it's really a time of... Um, gathering together, a time of giving, a time of sharing. And so um, we are glad that you are able to uh, make it uh, with us on tonight. Uh, so we are going to pray and then get into um, our lesson. Our Father and our God, we approach your throne, God, with grace, with humility, God, with Oh, thanksgiving for bringing us to this time, to this hour, to this moment, God, that has been designated from a time immemorial to ah, study your word. So we pray, God, that you would be with us, that you would enlighten us, God, that you would open our minds and our understanding, God, to receive that which you have prepared for us. And God, in advance, we be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for we ask it in no other name, but in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our King, for it is in his name that we pray and say amen, amen, and amen. All right, mm -hmm. so we are going to share our PowerPoint uh, on tonight. And I just need to get it up here. Here we go, here we go. All right, so listen, we are, we are still really in our um our focus on consecration but i really want to just change our perspective a little bit um in looking at this topic and i want to look at consecration from the perspective of a season of preparation a season of preparation and as we know we are really moving from our season of thanksgiving, at least that's the season that has been specified and set aside specifically um, as thanksgiving. But as, as believers, as children of God, you know, we give thanks all the time uh, to our God. But, but this specific season of thanksgiving, we are now moving from this season to another season. It's called the season of Advent. And it is a time when we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. Now, these two seasons are not mutually exclusive. As a matter of fact, each season builds on the other season. And so in our season of Thanksgiving, what we do is that we Thank God for his manifold blessings and his goodness that he just bestows on us time and time again. That's the season of Thanksgiving. Well, in the season of Advent, guess what? <laughs> we are still thanking God for his manifold goodness, but we focus in on his goodness in sending us his one and only son. And so uh, in, this, in this season of Advent that we are uh, embarking on, preparation is required. Preparation is required. Um, and so we know that God took time to prepare in order to become Emmanuel, God with us. As a matter of fact, the text in Galatians tells us that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law in order to redeem us. 
And so um, it was a long time of preparation. As a matter of fact, it took approximately 4,000 years from the time God first promised Adam and Eve that the seed of the woman would be coming. Uh, it took uh, roughly 4,000 years for that promise to be fulfilled. So we know that God uh, takes time to prepare and uh, for Jesus to become Emmanuel, God with us took preparation indeed. Well, likewise, preparation is required for us to be consecrated. And in, in our consecration, this 100 days of consecration, we are desiring to have the unbroken awareness of God's presence. We know that God is present with us because he lives in us. However, however, even though he is present, just like the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness and they had the physical presence of God in the form of the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, but yet they were not aware internally. Um, they had not internalized the presence of God with them, uh, meaning that not only his presence, but his power and his love and his grace and mercy and all those things were included in the presence of God with them, but they were not aware of that. And so every time they came into a difficulty, they started to complain and fuss and fight. But listen, listen, we do not want to be like that. And so what we are looking at is that preparation is required in order to be consecrated, to have that unbroken awareness of God's presence, knowing that his power, his provision is with us 24 seven. And so um, as we were looking at the pathway to consecration, just again, um, just as a reminder, what we were talking about is that consecration, the act of dedicating oneself to the worship of God, the word of God, the service of God, to increase intimacy with God, that consecration is a process. It requires time. Consecration is personal. It requires a personal decision and consecration is practical. Uh, for us. And so um, in, in summary fashion, consecration requires preparation. All right. And so with those introductory remarks, what we want to do is to look at God, to look at his pattern of preparation and to see what we can glean from God's pattern of preparation as we apply it to our preparation for God's presence. So what we are looking at is we're going right back to the very beginning, Genesis chapter one, and we're looking at God's pattern of preparation. And what was God preparing? Well, he was preparing for humans to be created. But he didn't just go and boom, create humans. No, nope. mm -mm. he had to prepare. So he prepared for us to be created. And then he prepared for us to be able to be in his presence. And so as we look at God's presence, pattern of preparation for us, for our creation, for our fellowship with him, we want to be able to use that preparation pattern to gain insight for our preparation for consecration. All right, so let's begin. And the first thing we note is that preparation is a process. Yeah, it's, it is a process, just like consecration is a process. God's preparation, his pattern of preparation 
includes a process. It's not a one-time event. It's not one and done. It do doesn't just happen instantaneously, but it is a process. So God, um, to create a place for humans to live was a process. And we see that as we begin in the text. Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, but there was a problem. Verse two tells us the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. So this is the problem we are encountering. The earth is formless, which means that it does not have a clear or definite shape or structure. Mm, that's not good. <laughs> no definite shape or structure. And then it says the earth was void, meaning completely empty. Oh my goodness. And then it was dark, a lack of illumination. And so the earth in that particular situation the way it was it was unsuitable for human habitation and so what we see is that assessment is required because of the situation assessment is required the earth is formless void and dark and so because of that the text tells us that the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And so what we see is that in, in terms of God's pattern of preparation, that preparation is personal because the spirit of God is personally involved. It is the spirit of God that is hovering over over the face of the waters. So what we notice from this, this word hovering, lets us know that there is um, time that is going by. It is a process that this assessment of the spirit of God at, as, as the spirit is hovering over the waters, this assessment took some time. Hovering, I-N-G, lets us know that it is an ongoing process. The Spirit of God moving over the waters. It's a process. And then after that assessment of the Spirit of God, looking at the situation, the formlessness, the void, the darkness, now that the assessment has taken place, a plan is required to remedy the situation, all right? So I want us, again, as we are going through God's pattern, I want us to apply it to our lives in terms of our um, consecration process, all right? So what God did in his preparation, we also need to do in our preparation, it's a process. Consecration is going to take time. And God took time as he was assessing. So it also means that we also need to assess our spiritual condition and see where we are. Are we formless? Void? Dark? Mm. All right. But it doesn't matter. Even if it isn't to that extent, we still need to make an assessment to see exactly where we are, what our condition is. And listen, guess what? The spirit of God can help us with that assessment. Absolutely. That's what he does. That's what he does. And he lives inside of us. So he is more than able to help us with that assessment. And then once the assessment is done, then we need to have a plan to remedy the situation because God assessment required a plan. And look at God's plan. It says, God said, let there be light. All right. So there was darkness 
And God remedied the situation and said, let there be light. And there was light. Now, what we see here, and as simple as this seems, it is very significant that God's plan was an ordered plan. Did you get that? It was an ordered plan because God addressed the darkness first, even though the darkness is listed third in the list of the problematic situation, formless, void, and dark. Darkness is listed last, but it is addressed first. Oh my, oh my. The, the voidness was not addressed at first. The formlessness was not addressed, but rather the darkness. You see, it's really very simple. God can see in the darkness because the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the deep, which was dark. But he was able to assess the situation because God can see in the darkness. In fact, the scripture says that darkness and light is the same to God. There is no difference because God is able to see even in the darkness. However, humans cannot see in the dark. If there is zero illumination, we cannot see. And so what is God doing? God is making this assessment of the earth in order to make it suitable for human habitation. He hasn't created humans yet because the earth is not suitable yet. So he has to make it suitable. And in order for it to be suitable for humans, guess what we need? We need light. And so the first thing that God addresses is the darkness and God spoke light into existence. Now, that was not difficult for God to do. Why not? Because God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So that was not at all difficult for God to do, but light was absolutely necessary for humans. All right. So we know that preparation, God's pattern of preparation, it's a process in terms of creating uh, and making the earth a suitable place for humans to live. But not only is preparation a process, but God's preparation was also personal because God himself got involved. The spirit of God is the one that moved on the waters and it is God himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who said, let there be. They got involved in this whole entire process, personally involved. So what we see is that God spoke what he wanted into existence. God spoke. So what about you? What are you speaking? What are you speaking about yourself? What are you speaking over yourself? What are you speaking over others and about others? Listen, your words are powerful. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So what are you speaking? God spoke what he wanted. God spoke the good things that he wanted. So we need to look at God's pattern and speak the good things. Speak those things that be not as though they were. All right. And then not only did God speak what he wanted into existence because he is personally involved in this preparation process, but verse four tells us God saw the light that it was good. It was good. So what God is doing is he is making ongoing assessment as he is putting his plan into effect he is assessing each step and stage of the plan. And so this first plan or this first part of the process was the light. Ah, 
the light is good assessment yes so now we can keep going because there is something good that is happening but then notice this god divided the light from the darkness now this is very important because when God said, let there be light, God did not eliminate the darkness. In other words, the darkness has its place. It has a purpose. So not because the, the darkness was on the face of the deep meant that darkness in and of itself was bad, but darkness needed to have its proper place. So God divided the light from the darkness. So what does this tell us about what we need to do? In assessing ourselves, we need to look at what's good. And then we also need to look at what may be good, but it needs to be maybe rearranged. It needs to be modified. It needs to be put in its proper place, in its proper uh, perspective, all right? So there may be certain things that you do that say um, watching television. Watching television in and of itself is not bad, but if you are watching too much television or you are watching television when the time and the purpose should be getting into the word, then that's an issue. And so it needs to be rearranged that uh, television time, and we're just using that as an example, it could be anything, but that television time needs to be put in its proper place, its proper perspective, so that um, everything overall can work for the good. So assess what's good, like the light, uh, assess what's good, but need to be arranged like the darkness. And then what is bad? What is bad needs to be discarded, needs to be emptied out, needs to be gotten rid of. And then it goes on to say, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So what is God doing? He is naming now uh, what it is that he is putting in place. And so he's giving it definition by giving it a name. Day, the time when it's light, and night, the time when it is dark. And so the text states the evening and the morning were the first day. So now we have some structure. We have some structure. We have a morning, evening. We have the daytime. Oh my goodness. Mm, 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 mm. So what God does now is that he addresses the formlessness. First, he addressed the darkness and he brought light into existence. And now he addressed the formlessness. That's what he's addressing. So um, the, the, the light and the darkness, we now got day and we now got light. We got uh, some structure. And then God said, let there be a space between the waters to separate the waters of the heaven from the waters of the earth. And it was so. God made this space to separate the waters of the earth from the waters of the heavens. And God called the space sky. So we got day, we got night, <laughs> we got waters above the earth, we got waters on the earth, and we got this expanse that is called sky. Oh my goodness. So we are getting structure. God is putting structure. So instead of this formlessness, now we are beginning, the earth is beginning to take shape on this second day. 
but we keep going because preparation, God's preparation is not only a process as he is creating this place for humans to live, but the preparation is personal because God himself got involved. And this preparation is practical because God is providing for the things that the humans are going to need in order to live the abundant life on this earth. So God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. So now you have the waters, not only you have the day and the night separated, but you got the waters and the dry land that is separated, and God saw that it was good. So ongoing assessment, it is good. What God is doing, the plan that he is now putting in place, it is good. All right. What plan are you putting in place for your consecration? Make the assessment. Is it good? See, now God was making this place uh, suitable for humans to live and he's doing it. It's a process step by step by step. And he's putting some structure, but guess what? It is still void. It's still empty. It's still, it's still empty. Yeah, there's some dry land. Yes, there's some water, but it's empty. There's, there's an uh, expanse, there's a sky, but it's empty. There's day and night. Yes, but it's empty. It's still void. However, God keeps going because it's a process. Then God said, let the land, now the land sprout with vegetation. Every sort of seed bearing plant and trees that grow seed bearing fruit. These seeds will then produce the kinds of plants and trees from which they came. So what is God now doing? Oh, he's taking care of the darkness, okay? He's putting structure in place and now he is addressing the void and is filling the earth with vegetation. And God saw that it was good. Yes, mm, this plan is coming together and it is good. Assessment, yes, good. Because understand, if the assessment was anything other than good, then God would have to make an adjustment. Listen, when you assess if something isn't quite what it ought to be, then you need to make the adjustment in your process of consecration. And the evening and the morning were the third day. But God keeps going because he's not done. We're not done. Our process of consecration is not done. So we got to keep going. God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. So now look at this. God is organized. He's put some structure in place, but now he got to, he's organizing. He's organizing the things that he is putting in place. And he says, let the lights be signs to mark the season, days, and years. More structure. So at first it was just morning and evening, the day, but now there's going to be season and years. So there's going to be the passage of time and God is putting that structure in place. Let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And it was so. God's plan, whatever God decided he wanted to do, that's exactly what happened. What have you decided that you want to do in your process of consecration? Are you doing it? Is it happening? And then the text goes on to say, God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day, that's the sun, the smaller one to govern the night, that's the moon. He also made the stars. And then God set these lights in the sky. Look at this to light the earth, not, not to light uh, Mars and, 
uh, Jupiter and Pluto and all of those. No, but to light the earth. Why the earth? Because that's what God is preparing for humans to live. And God saw that it was good and the evening, the morning was the fourth day. And then, and then God said, look at this, look at this. Oh, I love this. I love this. And then God said, as he's looking and assessing and seeing what is needed, because God's preparation is practical. So God said, let the water swarm with fish and other life. What is God doing? He is addressing the void. He is filling the waters with the things that humans are going to need to sustain their life. So he has, he's, he's creating life, but this life is also going to be able to sustain the life of the humans that he will be creating. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. He's filling the skies so that the skies are not void. The waters are not void, but they are filled. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that scurries and swarms in the water and every sort of bird, each producing offspring of the same kind. And God saw what? It was good. He assesses each step and stage of the process. But look at this, you know, and as many times as I've read Genesis chapter one, I don't know that I have ever noted, I'm sure I've read it, but I don't know that I've ever noted this in verse 22, where it says, then God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. So the first blessing that God gave was for the fish and the birds. Let the fish fill the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Okay, so the first blessing and for multiplication was not the man and the woman, but rather it was the fish and the birds. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So we got one more day in this process. This process that is personal and practical. God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground and wild animals, and it was so. So now you have not only the seas filled, not only the skies filled, but now the earth is being filled. And God saw it was good. Everything God did was good. And then, and now, and now, it's this is still the sixth day. Now that the earth is filled, Filled. You got the sun uh, for the day, you got the moon for the night, you got the waters above the earth, you got the waters on the earth, you got the sky, it's filled with birds, you got the seas filled with fish, you got the land filled with animals and with vegetation. And now, now that everything is in order and it's good, it's good. Now, God said, let us make human beings, look at this, in our image to be like us. Oh, that is so critical. That is so crucial. Why? Well, God is making humans in his image. Why? For fellowship, to be like him, not, but not only for fellowship to be able to be in his presence, to walk and talk the way Adam and Eve could see God face to face in the garden and have times of fellowship in the cool of the day. Not only for fellowship, but look at this. Look at God's plan um, ahead of time. Even before um, he, he created man, he created and designed for the purpose of salvation that's right for salvation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep 
He had salvation in mind when he said, let us create man in our image to be like us. So humans had to be like God so that God could become Emmanuel, God living with us. For God to become like man, God had to make man like God. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? What a plan. What a preparation that God had. Complete preparation. And so, not only for fellowship, not only for salvation, so that God can become like us, God living with us. But look at this. God also made us in his image and his likeness so that we can become his habitation, the place where he lives. So just like God made a place for us to live and prepared and did everything that was needful and necessary for us to have a beautiful, wonderful, gorgeous place for us to live that would meet and satisfy our needs. Now, God also made our bodies as a place that can become his habitation. And guess what? Our job is, our job is to do what God did for us, to make our bodies a beautiful, wonderful place for God to live in. That's what consecration is all about. God not just living in us, but living in us in a way in which he is living in a place that has been prepared and designed specifically with God in mind. Oh my, oh my. That's consecration, y'all. That's what it's all about. And then God continues to say about the humans he's created, they will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals. So just like God rules over the universes, now the man and the woman that he created would rule over this earth that he designed specifically for them. And then verse 28, God blessed them and said, look at this, be fruitful and multiply. There it is. That's the second time this blessing is given. First time was for the birds and the fish. Now for the man and the woman, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. But he didn't say this about any of the animals. Govern the earth, govern the earth. In fact, reign over the fish, the birds, and all the animals. And then God said, look, I have given you every seed bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fish fruit trees. Why? For your food. Okay. So provision, I'm telling you, God's preparation is practical. He provided all that humans would need. He placed it in this earth. And then God looked over all that he had made and look at the assessment. It is very good. Very good. All along, it was good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. And now, at the end, when he looks at everything, he said, mm, my good, you did a good job. You know, he kind of pat himself on the back. He said, this is very good. And the morning, the evening were the sixth day. Oh, my, oh, my. All right. And so, okay, let's go. And so as we um, close our um, session and prepare for our uh, discussion um, on tonight, um, God's pattern of preparation as he prepared for us, prepared this earth 
for us to live in um, and then to live in his presence. What we understand is that preparation, God's pattern of preparation, it is a process as God created a place for us to live. And the question is, are you creating a place for God's presence to live in a beautiful, wonderful environment where God's spirit is, uh, is at peace, is at rest, and can say, mm, this is very good. You did a great job. This is a very good uh, place uh, and God's assessment of the place that you have provided for him is very good. And then preparation is not only a process, the preparation for consecration, it's personal. It's personal. Um, God got involved himself. He didn't, you know, it was the angels or nothing else. It was God himself. God said, God said, God said. So, are you personally involved in the process of consecration? God sure enough was personally involved in preparing for you. And are you making ongoing assessments of where you are in the process of consecration? And then the takeaway we get from God's preparation process is it is practical, practical. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, God provided. He didn't just put stuff just to put stuff mm -mm, and just fill with random stuff. No, God provided the things that we would need. So again, are you making ongoing assessments and are you making ongoing adjustments based on those assessments. Bottom line is this, God prepared extremely, extremely well for you. How well are you preparing for him? Amen, amen. All right, so we are going to end there. And so we have, um, you know, some time. Uh, time left um, that we can um, share, uh, discuss, um, you know, any kind of takeaways that you have. If there are questions, of course, uh, we will entertain those questions, um, comments, uh, what are, are your thoughts? I know this is a um, Genesis one is a familiar passage, but we kind of looked at it from a little bit of a different uh, perspective on tonight. So if you wanted to share what insights uh, you may have gleaned or what you just took away, how did the spirit of God speak to your heart uh, on tonight about preparing uh, for his presence? All right. So, um, we are open for you to share. Dr. Dennery, someone had a question um, in their uh, comment section. Okay, let me check that. Okay, is that God, is God the creator of the darkness? Um, well, God is the creator of all things. And so the darkness, um, as, as we stated, the darkness, God has a, a place and a purpose for darkness. Okay, so it's nighttime now and it's dark, uh, but it is not, but there is still light. So we have the moon that gives light. And then of course, God also gave uh, humans the wisdom to be able to invent, I'll put that in <laughs> uh, in quotes, to invent um, light, artificial light. So we have lights in our homes. Um, the, the, the light from the moon would not be sufficient 
uh, for us in our homes. So God has given us wisdom that we can then now take what God has already provided, all the things in this earth God has provided, so we can just take what God has already put in this earth, rearrange them, <laughs> and use them then for our benefit. All right? So yes, God um, created everything. Okay. Comments, insights. Um, what did you take away um, from tonight? Okay, I see someone that unmuted that says Galaxy. Okay, if you would like to share, uh, please go right ahead. I really enjoyed uh, the emphasis on preparation um, and also the fact that God has created such a beautiful place for us to live and, you know, um, how are we preparing a place for him? What And how are we, how, like, how well are we um, keeping that place for God to live and dwell in us? Mm -hmm. I just thought that was really dope too. I thought it was dope and insightful. Good, good. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good. Thank you for that. I want to um, just piggyback on that. I, I completely agree. Um, I also was just so blown away and reminded of God's intentionality, you know, and for him to stop back and assess and see that it was good. So, you know, the comment that was just made, and that sounded like Jessica, I'm not sure, but, um, you know, where she said, how, how well are we preparing a place for it? Like he was so intentional about the, the place he was preparing for us to live. Are we being as intentional about the place where we're desiring him to live, which is within us? Do we constantly reassess and look and say, is it good? And if it's not, are we willing to let go of something so we could be good or do the work so that it could be good? So um, th that's what hit me. Good, good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yes, yes, indeed. You know, um, because every, everything and, and a lot of times when we look at, you know, Genesis one, we don't really think about it in that light, but everything God was doing was for us. Literally, it was for us. You know, um, there's no account of, you know, God, um, you know, for Mars or for Jupiter or, you know, um, um, those other planets and uh, what, what God did. There, there, there's no account um, anywhere for what God did. We just know that, yep, he created them and they exist and they're there. But when it came to the earth, because the earth was for human existence to live. And then, and then listen, after God did the earth and everything was very good, you know what, it, the, the text, and we didn't get to this, uh, we may follow up with that next time, but, but then God said that he made a special place um, called the Garden of Eden, especially for the man and the woman that he had made. So in all the beauty of the entire earth, then he still planted a special garden for the man and the woman to be able to live in. And that, and literally Eden literally means delight. So God made a specific place called a garden of delight for the man and the woman to live in. So the place that you have prepared for God to live in, is that a place of delight for God? Well, inside of you. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, hello? <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I, uh, first of all, uh, there's a lot of work I need to do. 
this was absolutely beautifully broke down and beautifully explained. And so Amen. I, I because because you're showing so much how things are in order, it just makes me question how many churches are so, so, so far out of order on what God is is asking, what God is needing, what God is seeking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You know, and we, we, we are the church, you know, each of us individually um, is the church that makes up the body of Christ. Amen. And so when we, you know, assess ourselves and make the adjustments um, as individuals, and then when we come together as the body of Christ, then, mm -hmm. then we can see the beauty of what we have done individually. That preparation then becomes now magnified when we are able to gather together as the body of Christ. And that's, that's what we want. That's what we want. Go ahead, so can you say something? Uh, I like to say something. Yes, go ahead. Um, this was... It was just awesome. Uh, my heart has been very much in, in Genesis. Uh, and, and I know that there was something, just something that um, uh, I, I wanted to, to grab out of, out of uh, Genesis 1. Uh, because it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. and you articulated it so wonderful that I, it, just, it just quickened in my spirit. I... I, I, I learned something and um, it was just absolutely good. And, and the passion, when you, when you talk about how good it was, and how good this is, how good that, and, and, and the you know, thing of life itself, sometimes we forget that, how, how wonderful, how he made it and he said it's good. So I just want to uh, thank you so much. It was, it was a very, very awesome lesson. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you, God, God is truly, um, truly amazing uh, in, you know, the word that he gives us. And as he, you know, opens our eyes, our understanding, you know, to be able to see um, the depth of what God has revealed um, in his word for us. And so it's just a, a privilege to be able to um, study God's word and, 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 and be able to um, discuss it and present it. It's just so beautiful. Amen. Um, Sister Teresa, I see you unmuted. If you want to yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say um, thank you, Dr. Dennery, because I was thinking as we, you began with the lesson with consecration, and this was such an excellent example. I never thought of it this way, how God, you know, we take for granted like Genesis 1. He went in deep preparation uh, to prepare for what he want us to have. And the word consecration, we say it but we're not taking the seriousness of it. Mm -hmm. And, and I, and I got to thinking, I'm still thinking, and my heart warms to the fact that even though he prepared all of this for us and we're still here, he hasn't stopped preparing and, you know, we come and go, but preparation is still going on and we got so many chances so in the ending, when you said God prepared extremely well for you, how well are you preparing for him? Mm -hmm. That gives me more to think about, more to work on. And so I just want to say thank you for that, that analogy, that, that comparison is so real. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I just want to read um, here from um, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, um, which is the Apostle Paul um, saying to us, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. 
test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. As you test yourself, I hope you will re recognize that we have not failed um, the test of apostolic authority. Of course, um, you know, Paul was saying that too because people were questioning his apostolic authority. But as he is um, stating to us to examine ourselves, uh, to see if your faith is genuine. That is um, what uh, consecration is about. That's the assessment um, that we all need uh, to engage in. All right. Okay. Well, praise God. Thank you all so much. Uh, it is 733. So, um, you know, we want to uh, be respectful of um, our time that we've set aside this um, consecrated hour um, for our time of study. So thank you all so much uh, for joining us. Um, we do uh, want to, you know, start on time every week. And we know sometimes things happen. You may not be able to log in, you know, exactly at at um, 6.30, but to the extent that, you know, possible, you know, um, set your alarm. That's what I do. <laughs> um, I set my alarm so um, I don't uh, miss the time. I set it, you know, seven, uh, 6.25, so give me five minutes to uh, be able to um, get together and log in so that we can start, um, you know, right at 6.30. So thank you all so much for and uh, spending this time uh, in God's word and um, and to let God's word resonate in your spirit. And so I'm going to be sending out the uh, recording um, so that, you know, you can listen to it again. And, you know, if some of the folk who may not have been able to um, log in, um, if you can please send it to them so that they would be able to um, to hear as well, because what we want, uh, our strength is as a as a body of believers, as Rice Community Church. So we don't want to leave anybody behind. <laughs> OK, we want everybody to come uh, into this uh, process of consecration. And so um, share it with others, um, talk about it, encourage them to listen, and so that we can all be on one accord. Amen, amen. All right, so we're going to um, um, pray. Um, I'm not sure if that's pastor on there. I think that might be pastor. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, Lady Ruby, if you would be so kind as to um, close us out in prayer on tonight. I will. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you, we were taught this evening, Father God. And Father God, we have read Genesis 1-1 so many times, but Father God, you have really made it plain and made it clear this evening. So Father God, we just want to thank you for Dr. Dennery and for allowing her to share what you have poured into her to us that we may understand it. Father God, bless everyone that's on this call this evening. And Father God, just help us to be true disciples for you. And Father God, help us just to continue to have the thirst to get to know you better. Mm -hmm. Father God, we love you. We adore you. And we just thank you for what you've already done mm -hmm. and for what you will be doing. Mm -hmm. So we ask that you continue to watch over us yes. as we sleep tonight and help and bring us joy in the morning, Father God, in the precious name of Jesus. We give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Mm -hmm. In his name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you, Dr. Denner. Everybody. Great Hi, lesson. Pastor. Great lesson. Thank, Thank you, you, Ruby. Hi, Pastor. Thank you. Hi, Pastor. I, I, it took me a while to get off my mute. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. We will never we will never read Genesis uh again the way we used to. Not the same. Right. Us oh, no. Right. 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 Oh, awesome job. Dr. Denner, we're glad you're feeling better. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Praise God. God is Amen. good. Amen. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have, a, have, night. A, have a beautiful Amen. evening, everybody. God bless you. Bye -bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye.